On today's episode, we are breaking down the NFC South, which just had a really big move that's going to shake some things up. And best ball breakdown, we're going to talk some tight end strategy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Do it. Subscribe. Like this video. Leave us a comment. And enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for the nasty people out there. Oh, brother. Woo! I am your host for today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by Jason Moore, Andrew Holloway, getting some R&R before the big marathon that is the NFL football season. The sprint of seven months. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's not really a marathon if you have to go full speed the whole time. But we like to do it. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. And that whole brother, we got some news right before the show started Thank freaking goodness. <laughs> yeah, we, we're recording a little bit early uh, on this episode, and if we had recorded a little bit earlier, yeah, we might have needed to redo some things. Because we're talking about the NFC South today. Oh, got- yeah, that's got the Panthers <laughs> in it, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. With the uh, Sam Darnold. Yeah, the Sam Darnold-led Carolina Panthers, or formerly known as the Sam Darnold-led Panthers, some quick reminders here before we jump into the show. Ultimate Draft Kit, it's available. It's going to be updated as soon as we are done recording, and we will get all the stat changes in there. That is our draft tool that lives through the entirety of the draft season. It is July. That means a Saturday podcast will be dropping into your podcast player of choice. And so the three shows, and we jump into five starting in August. If you want to follow us on the socials, for things like this breaking news and our reactions, Twitter at the FF, at the FF Ballers, at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. Those are our personals. And we are also over on Instagram with those personals as well. So let's, I mean, yeah, do, let's should just, I hit the button? Uh, yeah, you got, sure. You hit the button. Breaking news. The Carolina Panthers are acquiring Baker Mayfield from the Browns for a 2024 conditional fifth round draft pick. It is pending a physical, which I, I mean, like Baker did have the, the, the shoulder problem, but I don't see a, a reason this doesn't go through. The teams are going to split the financials. This seems like a best case scenario for both teams. For the Cleveland Browns, it was done. After they went and they got Deshaun Watson and all of the things that were, were involved in that trade, it was done. Baker was never taking another snap for the Cleveland Browns, even if Deshaun Watson receives the suspension for this year. The Carolina Panthers were stuck with Sam Darnold with a terrible contract situation, knowing he is not the future for the Carolina Panthers after a, what, five-win season mm-hmm. with a with – offensive skill players, and a good young defense, and they only managed five wins. So here we go. Let's react to Baker Mayfield. Yeah, I mean, this this was certainly in the cards the second that the Browns started kicking the tires on Deshaun Watson. Remember, before they even got him, Baker came out with this, like, yeah. He good, knew it was done. Yeah, it was like a good buy letter. Same same thing happened with Matt Ryan. When the Falcons were close, yep. he's like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> yep. Um, but – for the Panthers here, and we're we're, we're going to talk more about the entirety of the Panthers uh, as as we get into the meat of today's segment. But I mean, the predominant name to think of here is DJ Moore. Yes, DJ Moore has been an unbelievably great NFL talent. He's you know a pinnacle of athleticism even among the NFL athletes. He has gotten the job done, eleven hundred plus yards. He's he's super young. But it's always been he doesn't have a quarterback that can really maximize his talents. And his ceiling has been very, very, very limited. Um, His floor is high, but his ceiling is low. And now you go from Darnold to Baker. and And the question is, is that enough of an upgrade? It is an upgrade. Darnold is 
definitely worse than Baker. Baker did not have the season he had a couple years ago by luck. He has pushed through injury, played injured this last year, got the Browns to the playoffs, won a playoff game. Um, you know, before we started recording here, we already saw the the lines uh, moving. You know, DK Sportsbook, we were – uh, looking at the the win totals for not just the Panthers but the Falcons, like this is this is a big change going from Darnold to Baker. But is Baker good enough that the hope and the hype will come through for DJ Moore? Here's what I will say: So DJ Moore, the fifth most targets and receiving yards for a wide receiver before turning 25 in NFL history, and yet dead last in receiving touchdowns amongst wide receivers with 300 receptions in their first four years in the NFL. The guy has had unbelievably bad touchdown luck. And just going like a quick scan here, Sam Darnold, in his four-year career as a starter, has never surpassed the 20 passing touchdown threshold. Nine last year, granted, you know, it's some injury, but uh, essentially 11 games started. The year before that for the New York Jets in 12 games, Nine passing touchdowns. Meanwhile, Baker Mayfield, who had a down statistical year this past year with only 17, three of his four years as a starter, has surpassed the 20 touchdown marks. He broke the the rookie touchdown record his rookie year, which is, has now been broken by uh, Herbert. But like you're at least getting in the mid-range of 20 passing touchdowns. Meanwhile, Sam Darnold not surpassing 10 last year despite having DJ Moore and these guys available to him so I think it's a tremendous upgrade I think that Baker is a starting quarterback in the NFL I won't go as far as to say like he's not great we haven't we have we have seen too much fluctuation for him which okay you know what I'll make some apologies here again for Baker year one again breaks the rookie touchdown record but he's dealing with all of uh, Hugh Jackson's ineptitude as a head coach. Next year, it's Freddie Kitchens, one and done as a professional coach. You move into Kevin Stefanski, who is a run first uh, head coach in the NFL. Like you're just, you've been switching systems basically his entire uh, career. So I do think that this is a big upgrade for the Carolina Panthers. They are very interesting. Jason is looking at me. Hit the button. Breaking news. Uh, we, have, we have more. More breaking news. Uh, this is tweeted out by uh, Mike Garofolo. Sam Darnold had a good spring for the Panthers, and they're by no means handing the job to Baker Mayfield. There will be a training camp competition. Yeah, right! That is the what biggest crock of nonsense I've ever heard. What are we doing? That's why... What are we doing? I Before the show, I still, I still, despite... So much empirical evidence. I still stood up for Matt Jaw rule. I still said I believe that he can be a good head coach. You did. I am having a hard time sticking with that. <laughs> if they're going to go with the you, you, I mean, you can't trade for Baker <laughs> and then be like for a competition. Stop what it. nonsense! The the sports book lines are changing because it's obvious that this is an upgrade. So whatever news comes out that it, is a, that it is a competition, throw all of that in the garbage, print it out, wipe your butt with it, flush it down the toilet, but, you know, if it's printer paper... Yeah, don't do that. That's going to be wrong. It's going to be some... <laughs> thank you, thank you, deucers. Never... This the podcast. deucers never <laughs> miss a moment. We just... We, yeah, we have toilet sound effects at the ready. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of our thing. But, the yeah, the, there will be no training camp battle... Um, unfortunately, that means that you won't have him necessarily getting all of the reps, all of the starts. That's what all, I was going to go with. Which is which is extra dumb. And and I don't know the exact physical health of Baker at this moment. Maybe this is you know the camp battle because he shouldn't just be uh, run through the ringer right now. But it will be Baker Mayfield week one through week seventeen, barring injury. And Matt Corral drafted in the third round. Uh. Sorry to that, but which the, Baker's on the last year of his contract, so he is playing for a new deal. If he plays well, you would imagine he will be the Panthers' quarterback moving forward. But very interesting to watch. You know this this is the type of fun stuff for fantasy football. Before we move into the news, I just want to shout this out real quick, Jason. I don't know if you had seen it. There was a, an article in the Washington Post. Michael Wardian, uh, you you don't know the name, but this feller 
He went on like a huge Forrest Gump run. Oh. And over 60 days, ran 3,200 miles. Uh, the guy raised over $100,000 for some clean drinking water to, for families. And we got a shout out because part of his inspiration while running was he was listening to songs and podcasts like the Fantasy Footballers <sighs> Podcast. Smart man. So I look, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that. We are so inspirational. We were the fuel. That we helped this man run over 50 miles a day. It's incredible. That's 53 miles a day. You can't do that without the fantasy footballers. Yeah. At least it hasn't been done to my knowledge without the fantasy footballers. It hasn't been done to my knowledge either. So, But it has been done <laughs> with the fantasy footballers. So, you know, so that's that was, great. That's pretty sweet. Good for you, man. That's that's quite the feat. And we're glad to be the fuel for for that running and the fuel for anybody out there who's on the treadmill right now. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. So again, Baker, the, that is the big news of the day. In smaller news now, we're getting reports from the Athletic that the Steelers won't offer Deontay Johnson anything near what Terry McLaurin just got because uh, – McLaurin got that bag. Did you guys catch the McLaurin press conference afterwards? Ooh, I didn't. Dude, he's just – he is that dude. He is just – like his charisma and likability is – we are. I already knew it was off the charts, but him talking about the contract and everything that he's gone through to like earn that – I don't know. It was better or worse than Jamal Williams? Well, Jamal Williams is just like a goofball. Yeah. He is – he's a, a fun guy that you want to hang around. But Terry McLaurin seems like an actual true leader of men. But anyways, back to the Steelers. Deontay Johnson, I mean, this this seems like the Steeler way. You knew when, when the Steelers went out and they drafted two rookie wide receivers, and you've got the long history of them drafting great wide receivers, replenishing that, not necessarily paying uh, their good but not – otherworldly right, right. wide receivers like you, when they had mike wallace and antonio brown exactly and it was like well you got to bring them both back it was no we offered the money to mike wallace he turned it down and then they got antonio brown this is why in dynasty i'm such a big fan of george pickens because sure you knew he was going to be a big part of their future the this report though for dynasty says that chase claypool you knew that deontay johnson and chase claypool could not both get paid for the future that's not that was not one of those two guys, if not both, but one was for sure out on their long-term plans. And it seems to me that they're saying that they would rather have the young receiving core, their two rookies they just drafted along with Chase Claypool for future years with Kenny Pickett over Deontay Johnson, uh, you know, the, the smaller, albeit good, possession guy. And look, Deontay could have a monster season this year and then get paid. It's TBD, but it is very Steelers of them to just keep finding good wide receivers in the second round and a little bit later. And we are we also have some reports here from the Athletic. They're expecting Cordero Patterson to be fully available and able to carry a full load at running back this season. Where are we? Where are we on Patterson? Patterson is someone that I'd never want to draw. I'm sorry, is overly optimistic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that he will get enough workload. He will certainly pay off for the first half of the season on his draft capital. No one wants the old aging running back on the team that has as good a shot at any to be the number one pick in the 2023 NFL draft. But Cordero will catch passes. He showed he's always been a really good, efficient running back when given the opportunity. He was great last year, so to start the year with fresh legs, I think he'll be fine. If you wanted to take him in, you know, if you're doing a zero RB build and you're looking for late round guys who can outscore what they have while you wait for the injuries to pop up and scoop up waiver wire guys, uh, Patterson's a perfect play. Now you've been uh, best balling a lot. Oh, yeah. recently. Are you taking any shots on later round shots on Damian Williams or or Tyler Algier? Um, yeah, I, I I think that um, I think Tyler Algier is a player. I've I've grabbed two shares of him that I know of. Um, I liked his film. I I recognize when you're drafted as late as he was, the odds are not in his favor to get the job. But I actually think he is a talented running back 
Um, and obviously with the age of Cordero Patterson, something happens it, it, with all the running backs ahead of him. Um, the opportunity will be there or could be there at, at some point this season for a, for a big workload. All right, let's talk about the NFC South. Let's get divisional. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 13-4, and four, ho-hum, you know, just last season. Uh, their win expectations set at 12 already, which, I mean, judging by their division, they seem to be the clear front, uh, front runners to win yet again. But we do have some big changes. Specifically, Bruce Arians is out. Todd Bowles is in, which this is a big deal because you have the head coach going from uh, Arians, who was – that's an offensive guy, to Todd Bowles, who was a defensive guy. Yes, Byron Leftwich, still the offensive coordinator and in control of that, but the person at the top has a very different mentality and outlook on the way that football is played. And you had Tom Brady, who was an incredible value for fantasy football this past year, finishing as the number three overall quarterback, throwing 5,300 yards and 43 touchdowns. But, I mean, the dude threw it 719 times. He could throw it 1,000. Well, I'm not saying he can't do it because I'm not betting against Tom Brady, the plant man, being plant and no. being revitalized by the, all, all those vegetables that he's eating. But 719 times, that is an absolutely absurd number, even factoring in an extra game for the 17-game season. Do you feel confident that he's at least going to come close to that? Are you fading Brady? Where are you with him? So I'm I'm down on Brady. Which is for the this affects the overall pass catchers as well. Yeah, I I am I am lower on Brady this year than last year. Last year he was Andy's my guy. Both of us had him in our top 5. That was uh very successful. I had tons of shares of Tom Brady last year and he was obviously excellent. But you cannot and this has nothing to do with his age or ability that the the deal with the devil's already been made, so I know that he'll right. he'll stay around forever. Um, He's got the golden fiddle. Yeah, but when you lose Chris Godwin for the beginning of the year, Gronk has officially retired. Wink, wink. Antonio Brown is self retired <laughs> right. uh, from the NFL. You you can't lose those three players and still throw for the same amount of touchdowns. It does up other players and I love this offense um, we've seen and talked about you know wide receiver target share that is missing from year to year goes to the running back Leonard Fournette looks like a great value this year he's going to catch the ball a ton from Brady and uh, Giovanni Bernard probably not even going to make the roster so I I, I love uh, the value on Fournette and Mike Evans those two guys I think are going to be absolute superstars because the Bucks. They lost pieces, and they're still going to be good. No one right. thinks like the offense is just going to crumble or be bad. Uh, not with not with Brady there. So uh, those guys are where I'm focusing on for the offense. Specifics to Chris Godwin's injury: he tore his ACL in Week 15, multiple ligaments, so his recovery should be a little bit longer. Okay, so we know for sure that is multiple. That's the latest thing that I read this okay, morning. Then I am O U T. Yeah, so it's it. They're gonna take him. They're gonna bring him back slow. I expect him to start on the pup. The pup is only four games this year, but it'll be probably October or November before Chris Godwin is back. Uh, Who's so, being drafted in the fifth round is the wide receiver twenty one. Right. If, if you look at best balls, where um, right now I, I would say the sharper drafters are are there at this time of year because most of our casual leagues aren't being drafted uh, in July. You've got Godwin and Russell Gage actually getting pretty close to each other uh, in draft capital. In our home leagues, okay. you've got Godwin in the fifth and Russell Wilson in the ele uh, Russell Gage in the eleventh. Russell Gage is an outstanding value yes. if you can get him there. He to start the season the first month or two as essentially the second target to Tom Brady. He should be, I mean, he should be like a top twenty four wide receiver for the first month or two. So I, I also like Russell Gage. Yeah, he's very interesting as a later round flyer. Uh, the even though the passing volume is going to come down, there will likely be three pass catchers of relevance for Tom Brady in this offense. 
finding out who the third is, and I'm not counting Fournette because I'm, I'm saying sure. pass catcher, but like at the tight end position with Gronk out, Cameron Brait to – yeah, I, know, I get that noise because like he Cameron Brait had some opportunities last year to step up when Gronk missed some games with opportunity or, or, or Gronk missed with injury. Cameron Brait did essentially nothing in those games. There are, you know, those – the hype pieces, the whispers of of uh, Cade Otten. They drafted him in the fourth, which Otten is one of those players where he, you know, like the circumstances, he should have been drafted higher. He fell, so maybe they got a huge value in the fourth. Doesn't matter. He's a but he's, he's still a rookie tight end. And if, if you please look no further than Kyle Pitts, top five drafted tight end, putting up a thousand yards and really no touchdowns and being not living up to his draft value. But Cameron Brait, we'll see if we get some more news on him going through the offseason. But yeah, the, the a lot of fantasy goodness The here. third piece is going to be an amalgamation of Jalen Darden and Scotty Miller and Tyler Johnson. It won't matter for any regular leagues. When you're doing weekly DFS, you could take a shot at one of those guys. But I would say that there are – I like the value of – Mike Evans of Leonard Fournette and of Russell Gage. Tom Brady is someone that he's still got the the gigantic name. I don't. I view Tom Brady and Kirk Cousins pretty similar this year. Um, that's that's I, a hot take. I've got Brady ahead of Cousins, but the gap in points and what they could do, I expect you know them to not be too far apart. And you can get Cousins much much cheaper. That's a hot take. Before we move to the next team, let's thank today's sponsors. The New Orleans Saints, they a scrappy team. They put together nine wins last year despite losing Jameis Winston early on in the season. Uh, but they've also had some big moves as well. Sean Payton is out. Uh, you had some just absolute craziness with their offensive ranks. So last year, 30th in passing attempts, <laughs> 32nd in passing yards. And oh, so they had a terrible passing offense. And yet... 11th in passing touchdowns, which consequentially led to 24th in rushing touchdowns. So that's a uh, – we would expect that to balance out a little bit more. But let's take a, a bigger look at this team. Jameis Winston, was he was brought back. He is also dealing with uh, his own recovery from a knee injury. But, I mean – I'm looking, I'm looking, looking at, at this game. game logs? Yeah, the game log is so funny for Jameis Winston. When you can – when you cannot hit 150 yards, like he did not throw right. for 150 right. yards, he threw for five touchdowns. An 8.7% <laughs> touchdown rate. Incredible work there, Jameis. <laughs> With no wide receivers. This this team's going to be very different. Yes. This team this year is, we'll put it this way, the moves that they have ma made this offseason, they didn't go out and, and trade a bunch for a new quarterback and look to the future. They believe they are a win-now team. Um, that's what they have shown. They have their defensive coordinator taking over this team whose heart and soul now is the defense. And their defense is very, very, very good. Yeah. So it's going to be a different team, especially considering you hope to get Michael Thomas back, which if you have not... That's all over the place. That's all over the place. If you have not seen the, the workout, it is plenty of time, plenty of videos online of Michael Thomas running against nobody, jog jogging against nobody. You know, and these are like hype pieces that every time I see them, I'm like, eh, maybe I should sure. drop them a few more spots. They traded up for Chris Olave. They signed Jarvis Landry. There's questions with Alvin Kamara and the suspension about, uh, so what's going on with him right now? He got in the, the bar fight last Pro Bowl, got arrested. Uh, there is surveillance video. It exists. It, oh. has not, it has not been leaked. People have not seen it outside of that circle. They have leaked the uh, images of the uh, victim, uh, and and um, you would expect that this NFL player can hit hard. Uh, so the suspension is going to come, and it you know it's being reported. They're bracing for at least six games. I, I don't know if that's, that's wild. The case or that's not. a new NFL. Yeah, but. The NFL is not going to suspend or likely to not suspend Alvin Kamara until the legal proceedings have run their course. The next 
uh, event for Camara is in August. Woof. So it's going to be coming gonna close be to drafts, and I don't think you're going to know by draft season whether or not, and, unless they get some kind of stake, because sometimes these NFL players can push their legal proceedings back years. So there is still the chance that his legal proceedings aren't aren't done this season um, and that the suspension comes next year. So uh, he is one of the craziest guys in drafts because it, he's dropping right now to like the, the back of the third, the fourth round in best balls. Really? Yeah. I mean, if you, you don't know, people don't want to be holding the bag. But at the same time, if you take that risk and his suspension goes to the following season. Or it's just two games or something. Yeah. I mean, then it's a crazy value. So um, I, he's he's one of those players right now. You can ask me, well, what do I do with Alvin Kamara? I don't know. Nobody knows. You don't know. I don't know. I'm, I I know all this information, but it, the answer is we, it, it's impossible to know for sure if he's going to miss any games, one game, two, six, eight games. So you just have to roll the dice there and get lucky. Chris Olave, one of our favorite rookie wide receivers heading into the year. I mean, it, his competition right now to become the number one guy for the Saints, it's Michael Thomas who hasn't played in forever and is knocking down the, the the age 30. Jarvis Landry, good possession receiver. He's also knocking at 30. Like this, this absolutely smells like the situation where we get to the end of the year and at some point Olave has a huge breakout game and becomes the number one wide receiver for the Saints. What will that be in this offense? I don't know how high he can go. Uh, for an end-of-season ranking, but he's incredibly interesting. He's worth a shot. He's not expensive Absolutely. right now. He's in the he's, you know in the 40s for wide receiver on best ball. He's dropped into the, the triple-digit uh, picks, and he doesn't cost that much, but with his talent, with the fact that he was drafted as a top-15 pick, since 2014, rookie wide receivers drafted in the top-15, they average a 19.2% target market share. Um, that is a really healthy number for fantasy relevance and man do I you know it's like his teammate well, teammates but uh, his teammate that got drafted this year Garrett Wilson out of Ohio drafted higher um, is the more touted guy but when I just watched them I, I liked Olave better like he was just so smooth his his route seemed so NFL ready um, so I, I think he's worth uh, a shot and could really have good fantasy relevance the second half of the year. And we are not done talking about the Saints without me giving my thoughts on Adam Troutman. No. But here's what I want to say about Adam Troutman. Like, why I really liked him last year was that it looked like he could be the number two option in this uh, for this team. Mm -hmm. But so, just doing some Adam Troutman research, and this files under things that you could have told me last year during the off season, so things that we did not know about. Okay. For Adam Troutman, so in the off season, I'm excited because I don't know this. In the off season, he developed a. I'm going to try and say it right. Pylonidal, yeah, pylonidal cyst, which that is, is that is correct. That is a cyst that goes on your tailbone, extremely painful. You have to get it drained, removed. That's a whole month. So a whole month he could not train. He's getting back into it. And what it happens? Appendicitis. He's knocked out for three for three weeks, and then he misses multiple weeks in training camp with a knee injury, and that turns into an incredibly slow start. Where it's like, wow, I was just so incredibly wrong about Adam Troutman being have even being able to do anything for this offense. But then week eight, you saw like once he's kind of recovering. His target share over the next four games turns into 18%, including his big breakout game where he had, uh, what was it, 58 and a touchdown, injures his knee, doesn't even get to complete that game, and then he's just toast for the rest of the year. So I'm not, I'm not going to tout Adam Troutman. Thank goodness. But it would not surprise me if he is far more involved and, and way better, like – don't bury him just yet. That's that's where I will put it. The the dirt has already been not only filled in from me. Yes. But his you can't even see where the grave was dug. He is it's I, all, and it's, I understand. The grass has grown over it. He is 
dead and gone. I would much rather have Taysom Hill than Adam Troutman for fantasy this year because Taysom Hill last year was, you know, not a tight end. He was like, oh, is he a quarterback? Right. What's what's going to happen? Now they know it's Jameis, and Taysom is training just as a tight end. He's the guy that's paid. He's ahead of Troutman. And so if you wanted to take a shot on a tight end, which I don't really want to do here with all the new weapons, um, but I would I would go Taysom over Troutman. But it is fun I would to talk not. about a, a cyst that we didn't know about. You want to say that? You want to say that again? Uh, Pylonidal. Oh man, you are, are you a doctor? Uh, not a doctor. Okay, but not uh, not only that, but also the appendix. I am completely out on Taysom Hill. Thirty two years old is not. Oh uh, yeah, do we want to do a water? Bet? Yes, we want to do a bet. End of season. More fantasy points. Inter water bet and injuries do not undo this. One. Taysom Hill's champion Sean Payton is no longer there. The move to tight end is because the contract was written that he gets paid way more money if he is a quarterback than if he is a tight end, and they're stuck. They are absolutely stuck with him. That's the next. That's that's a good off season. Taysom Hill yeah. versus Adam Travel. Where it matters. Disgusting. The Atlanta Falcons, seven and ten Wait, somehow. Real oh. quick. Mark Ingram. Oh, are yeah, you, yeah, are yeah you, sure. Are you taking a shot? Are you drafting him in hopes that you you know, if if the suspension starts the season for Camara, that you get several games of Mark Ingram? <sighs> I know Andy Hi. was really happy, got him last round in a best ball, which is good. That's eighteenth round. I mean, no no risk there. I mean, I just I no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I I find myself more and more with you. The more that I've thought through this, um, another, you know, Mark Ingram's another Sean Payton guy. Sean Payton's he's, gone. He's 32 and a half years old. He's very old. He was very bad last year. Like, yes. you, you, you know, say whatever you want about the opportunity. He sucked last year. So he's not going to get better this year with a worse offensive line, a defensive-minded uh, head coach, and there's no guarantee he's even the dude. Tony, Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. Oh no, is also on the death no. chart. So with a name like that, I you know. So, anyways, I think people are going to ask, "What about Mark Ingram?" And the two of us are. I I get it. If you are super desperate for a guy that will touch the ball in the first couple of weeks, if there's a suspension, but he's he, there's Mark Ingram was a great player in his time. They're just the. I'm taking an upside somewhere else. There's just no juice left. Yeah. The Falcons, 7-10. and 10, Surprising for what happened to that team last year where you lose Calvin Ridley, your number one wide receiver, to some mental health stuff at the beginning of the, of the year. You lose him again now for a full season after he did the <gasps> – he bet on a game. You can't, you can't do that. He bet on a you game. You can't bet from the inside, Mike. You can't bet from the inside and I totally understand the integrity of the game you can't have players betting on the game if but I'm not going to get fully into it but a Cal if Calvin Ridley receives a year suspension for a stupid tiny bet and Deshaun Watson is nowhere near a year suspension ridiculous I would agree with that it's just a matter yeah. of how you look at the year lost but uh anyways we're, but we're not going to get into that <laughs> so back to the Falcons uh you know, uh, like, pff, not not a fantastic year. Kyle Pitts did have over a thousand yards, but was really never. It just not he didn't boom for your team because of the lack of touchdowns. Now Matt Ryan is gone. In his Marcus Mariota, historically never provided anything for his uh, his his pass catchers. Guess you sort of had some Delaney Walker there, and then waiting in the wings is Desmond Ritter, who. Not a highly drafted player. They took him in the third round kind of as a, well, he's still there. We should take the shot because we don't have a starting quarterback. Ritter will start games for this team. I know that reports are coming out of Mariota's far ahead of Ritter. Well, yeah, of course. Marcus Mariota is has NFL experience. Ritter is a rookie, drafted in the third round. But this injury is the only way that Ritter finds himself on the field, I think is complete nonsense. You have to know, can Desmond Ritter actually play before the end of the season because you're going to have to address your quarterback situation in next year's draft. Well, part, part of the problem is that Mariota is not a bad quarterback, and that's good if you were the Steelers, where they've got Trubisky, and they're going to win games, and you're trying to still make the playoffs. Right. But Mariota is going to keep them in a game or two through the season, 
and be okay. And the Falcons really need that number one pick. Um, that they they're not they're not trying to you know go seven and ten again this season and find themselves not getting the the best quarterback. So I do think as the season progresses progresses, you're still going to lose enough games with Mariota where the opportunity to switch and get worse will present right. itself. Um, that being said, in the meantime. Marcus Mariota, this is just a, a an aside, but I do think over the first month of the season, a streaming guy, uh, a DFS play on a weekly basis, he's had many, many, many top ten weeks in his past, and he is reunited here, um, you know, with his former coach. So he's he's not, but the problem is he doesn't support wide receivers, and right. so the big, awesome, great, juicy name of Kyle Pitts. 21 years old, an absolute NFL dominator over the next decade. I don't know what to do with him because he's being drafted in every league I've ever seen that's real as the third tight end off the board yep. pretty highly. I don't have him getting to tight end three this year, so I can't ever get myself to pull the trigger on him. But the upside of what he can do, I mean, it's like Jamar Chase. When a guy is bigger, faster, stronger than all these other athletes, and people just can't catch up to them, that's what Kyle Pitts is. He could dominate. He could end up with 135 targets as a tight end and completely dominate. But I just, with with the quarterback situation here, I can't get myself to ever pull the trigger. Do you think you'll have any shares of Kyle Pitts? Can you take that upside chance? I don't think I will be like overweight of where I'm drafting Kyle Pitts. Oh, so I, it's a fat thing. So I'm going to be overweight. I wasn't going there. That, that was that was a self shame. That was self a self dunk. Self dunk. <laughs> uh, but I I totally understand taking him as the third tight end because if he could he could have a Darren Waller season where Darren Darren Waller, elite athlete, finds himself in a situation where he's the primary target and huge target share for for Derek Carr and he's fantastic. Uh, you now. You didn't have to draft him with a third round pick, so you weren't heavily invested. But I totally understand the reason for Kyle Pitts being there. I agree with you that it's very tough to take him when there's I see so much risk and so much downside, and with the other guys who are available in the third, that's the huge. It's I mean, very very so the opportunity cost is what's holding me back. That's exactly right. The opportunity cost. We're going to talk about that a little bit in our best ball segment today, specific to tight ends with some examples that are like. It's a mis I hate saying this because of the talent that could just scorch earth, but it is a mistake to take Kyle Pitts this year in the third round. So Cordell Patterson, we mentioned him a little bit. It's always nice to have a running back who has pass catching in his profile, you know, a converted wide receiver, so it's interesting. A reworked uh, wide receiver room here. You have the the high draft pick, Drake London who is a just a, a towering man. He's very interesting moving forward for his career. I would much rather, if I'm taking a rookie in my redraft leagues or my best ball leagues, I'd rather have, the we just talked about Olave, I would much rather go that direction. The stat about a 19.2% target right. share for top 15 drafted wide receivers applies to both of these. Both of these players were drafted in the uh, top 15. If you had to say, Who's more likely to have a 19.2% target share? It's Drake London, not Chris Olave. Sure. Because he is he's the wide receiver one, two, and three. Um, How dare you? How dare you put disrespect on the wee little man? No, oh. not the wee little man. The player that they that this team, they looked at their wide receiver room and they said, we have, we, we have a hole. We just need to add one piece. And they did it. So they went out and they made a trade this offseason, Jason. Did you forget about this? I forgot. Brian Edwards. Oh my gosh. Is on the Atlanta Falcons. Oh man. This is this is embarrassing. It's going from For Adam, you. Adam Trump <laughs> to Brian Edwards. Oh no. I am not touting Brian Edwards only because of Marcus Mariota, though. Yeah. Let, let the record show that if we had an elite quarterback here, we would be back in. I would agree with you. I would take Olave over London, even though London will have the targets uh, probably more assuredly than Olave will. But it's because of the quarterback situation, it, touchdowns, and you know offensive rank. 
uh, it's probably not going to go well. I mean, I, I don't know if this is very sticky, but last year uh, the Falcons were the 31st in plays per game. So the opportunity to have bad opportunity was low. So it's just like you, you don't really want pieces of this offense other than Cordero Patterson. On the defensive side of the ball, the Atlanta Falcons – not a, not a good season. No, uh, 27th no. in uh, rushing yards allowed. And we we have this incredible quote here from Kyle DeBorgogan, our resident Atlanta Falcons uh, truther, homer, expert. Some men piss excellence. Dean Pease, defense. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Pease. I mean, the guy's name is Dean Pease. Yes, yeah, that's, on, that's on your mama. What do you want me to do? That's on your mama, Dean. That's not on us. Well, yeah. <laughs> Gonna leave that one alone. Panthers five and twelve. This team has yes has completely been shooketh with the trade for Baker Mayfield. I mean, what a competition at quarterback they're gonna have. I look okay. I will. I will give. I'm gonna give Matt Rule a little bit of leeway here. the The trade last year for Sam Darnold, I un I totally understand where they were. They were in a situation with. You have a you have a good defense. You have offensive playmakers. You have to find a quarterback. You took the shot, the extension before even seeing him play. I don't know that the, the, that was a dumb game. That was just that was unnecessary. A, yes, it was very unnecessary. I, it was the well, we got to get out ahead of it because if Sam Darnold has a huge year with the quarterback market, we're going to have to pay him a huge amount of money. But was a bad gamble then, and the egg is on their face because of it. So I will give them the leeway there. If there is, in fact, a training camp battle and you are splitting reps with the ones between Baker and Sam Darnold and you don't just make the full commitment saying Baker is our guy, we need every single rep that he can get in the limited amount of time to be prepared for an NFL season, I will be furious and mm -hmm. completely out on Matt Rule. I am there as well. A lot of what the Panthers' projections here going forward are going to be determined upon are what is your belief in Baker Mayfield? And I, I kind of, I, I, I'm not hedging here. I, I believe that Baker Mayfield is a good quarterback, but I don't think he's a, uh, I don't think he's a top ten guy. And That's so, fair. The, from a fantasy perspective, I have this. Top ten things to remember that I mean it was it was perfection last year, and we've got a couple of situations where it's really I was trying to hammer home that the hope this is Carson Wentz, this is uh, Baker Mayfield here that the hope and the hype of these middle tier quarterbacks that are going to come in and rescue the franchises from their bad quarterbacks, it's not the fix it's not going to save them they're not going to be great um now it's tough because I really like the Panthers I think they have a great defense they're getting Christian McCaffrey back they have DJ Moore and now if I believe that Baker is a good quarterback which I do this should buck that trend this should be something that maybe he is the savior maybe he is the long-term franchise option um for for this team and and some of that's going to come down to Health early and training camp reps. Ben McAdoo comes in as the offensive coordinator. Uh oh, I'm I'm fine with this. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm I am absolutely. There are. There but do are, you remember how bad he is? I think he's a bad head coach. Not not everyone in the NFL is built to be a head coach. I think this is fine bringing him as the offensive coordinator. Uh, at the wide receiver room, you know, DJ Moore, great talent. I agree, Jason. That I'm not going to. This doesn't all of a sudden move DJ Moore in of the, yes, this is it. This is the top 12 year for DJ Moore. But I mean, he wide receiver, you know, being drafted as like the wide receiver 17. If, if he stays right around there, I will be more willing to draft him at that, at the back of the fourth, top of the fifth. Yeah, I mean, DJ Moore has been disappointing and inconsistent, but over the last three years, which are his three years in the league, not his rookie season. He was the wide receiver 18, the wide receiver 22, and the wide receiver 19 and a half point scoring. He's going to be better with Baker than with what he's had. He might not be a superstar, but he's going to be better. That means he is a top 15 wide receiver. Like, that's, that's his new baseline to me. And he can give you boom weeks. Oh, certainly. Like, if the, 
if the touchdowns actually come for DJ Moore here with the switch to Baker, he will give you plenty of weeks where he wins you the week, and I like it. Now, but, but for the other guys, though, Robbie Anderson finishing with uh, an average of just over 30 receiving yards per game, or Terrace Marshall Jr., one of the lowest yards per route rung among rookie wide receivers since 2014. Who's going to step up? Uh, <laughs> no. If I had to pick one of those guys, Robbie Anderson or Terrace Marshall Jr., uh, I, I, I would go with Terrace Marshall. Really? I would, even though he was uh, an abysmal, atrocious uh, mistake of a rookie. Uh, I, I loved his film, but you don't get much worse than that. Think... Think what's happened to Denzel Mims, right? He was a hyped guy. People loved him. He had just a terrible season, and he's poof. Like, he might not make the roster um, this year for the New York Jets. So, Terrace Marshall isn't someone I'm targeting, but he is someone that I am curious about. He was injured for a lot of the preseason, and, and that time missed a couple games in the middle of the year, had Sam Darnold. I, I just still believe in the, you know, he's 22 years old. He was a very talented collegiate wide receiver, you know, was part of that three pack with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and um, is a big bodied guy that I prefer over a Robbie Anderson type of player. And Robbie was so bad. Like It blew my mind today in researching that Robbie Anderson had 110 targets last year. Robbie Anderson did jack freaking squat. Yes. He had 110 targets. That's just cr how how bad can you be? And it, this, I, I, I mean, we need some more time with it. But Robbie Anderson could end up being interesting. I mean, well, it's not great when a wide receiver muses about retiring mm -hmm. during the off season as he's twenty nine years old. That's not really what you want to hear. But. Uh, and I need to go back and just watch Robbie Anderson because like, statistically, yes, 110 targets turning into 53 receptions for for 519 receiving yards. That is hashtag bad. That's unbelievably bad. But was that just Darnold and Roll in the offense? Because they com they completely changed how they used Robbie Anderson coming off of the uh, the thousand yard season, nearly 1100 yards that he had in 2020, they just they changed everything and he became this short yardage guy. Yeah, it was it was a What if he what if he goes back? Well, I th I think he will go back. I think that will be good for Robbie Anderson, but I don't necessarily think that he's getting better go getting closer to 30 um and he's always kind of been a head case. There's a lot of bad quarterback, bad coaching decision combinations in the NFL and his 30 and a half receiving yards per game are the lowest ever among 1,056 wide receivers with 100 plus targets in a season. So, yeah, Darnold was bad, but those 1,056 wide receivers, I'm sure some of them have bad quarterbacks sure. too. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just throwing it out there in the realm of possibilities. And because the NFL just works out beautifully oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah. The Panthers in week one play. <laughs> Drum roll, please. The Cleveland Browns. Yes! Let's go, prime time! Now, this can go so many ways. Because this could be Baker Mayfield against Jacoby Brissett. And Jacoby Brissett <laughs> might beat the Baker Mayfield oh, Panthers. Man. Like, that is... Because <laughs> the Cleveland Browns, is, the, the team is good. Yes. The team overall is good. Like, the team could just – they could give the ball to Nick Chubb 30-something times and end up winning. Oh, the NFL. Panthers' run D is very good, though. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I'm just – this This is going to be a magical week one matchup. Yeah. Man, do I wish that game was in Cleveland. That yeah. Just Baker going home, all the commercials about protecting his home that is <laughs> – ah, you're going to have to scrub those commercials. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't work out for them. Uh, so, let's wrap this up. Who wins the division, Jason? Uh, I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at minus 300 to win the division. Kyle, do we know, is that the like most odds on favorite of anyone to win? Yes, the best odds. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, like this this is like we're talking Armageddon-type catastrophe for the Bucs to not win the division. Yeah, it's, it's funny because one of my uh, heaviest weight bets of this offseason that I just love the odds on 
was the Saints getting second place in this division, which seemed like a guarantee. Ooh. Now with Baker and the, the Carolina yeah. Panthers, like, oh, okay. okay. Do you, toughest player to project. Toughest player to project in this division. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a cop-out, but Chris Goblin, I don't know what to do with them. Sure. We don't know his, uh, you know, his current status as far as timeline getting back. Say, same with Michael Thomas. Those two guys are like, just just call it quits on this season. Just give me clarity. <laughs> that's all I want. That's rough. It's rough, but yeah, I'm gonna, that's what I want. I'm going to say Michael Thomas, who we haven't seen him forever, but last time we saw healthy Michael Thomas, an elite wide receiver. Uh, and do you have a sneaky player that you want to add, uh, like dynasty waiver wires you're throwing on the, uh, the back of your roster? Um, well, we just talked about uh, Dude, like, Terrace Marshall. Uh, Rob, Robbie Anderson might be on your waiver wire. <laughs> yeah, he might. Terrace Marshall might as well. I guess he's young enough where people probably haven't dropped him yet. Um, I would also say Scotty Miller. Uh, yeah, that's a good name. You know, he's he's usually Brady's preferred guy or Scott Miller now. Um, oh, he's Scott? Is he so serious? Yeah, he grew up. I am no Scott Miller. Yeah, oh, he wears a tie and everything on the field. <laughs> Just a little clip on right so on the front serious. of the uniform. Also, we didn't talk about him, but Christian McCaffrey is very good. I didn't feel it. Yeah, yeah okay. we don't need to talk All about right. it. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, if he's on the field, he's great. If he's injured, he's bad. Pick your poison. He's probably even better now with Baker. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that, oh, that's just such a nauseating discussion. Christian McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. He's very good. And so, well, that's the end of the discussion. All right, it's underdog fantasy time. Best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Speaking of Christian McCaffrey, he is featured in the video bumper of that intro. Did I have I already brought up how funny it is that he reveals the beanstalk and then it's like, nah, bro, I'm going back in the pipe. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the beanstalk is you, the, that's that's where the warp is special levels. You're skipping to level. I don't even remember. There's, anymore. A, there's at least good coins there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're getting you do a, something a crap ton of coins. Probably an extra life. Take you over the hundred mile. I don't want to go back to the sewer. And then you're going to zone five. Yeah. He's like, no, come on, Mario. You're better than that. Do 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 do. Um, all right. So I'm I'm both excited and. A little bit disappointed to share uh, this best ball breakdown today uh, because I've been playing uh, just a, way too much uh, underdog fantasy. Not true. <laughs> well, that is true. I, it's not, there is never enough. Yes. But um, this is a strategy that I've been using a lot. There's a lot of data behind it. And so we're going to talk about the tight end strategy uh, for best ball break for uh, underdog fantasy right now. There is, in redraft leagues, getting an elite tight end is a true positional difference maker. It's a huge fantasy advantage. Mike, did you win a championship last year with Travis Kelsey? Uh, yes. Oh, me too. Yes, we shared a team. Um, because he was awesome. And he, Especially when we needed him. <laughs> yes. Uh, he, was, he was great in the playoffs. I mean, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, you get one of these guys, and they're unbelievably great. But in best ball formats where you are if you take one of these top guys you're probably only grabbing one other tight end it doesn't always work out as well um in a, a best ball format as grabbing three late tight ends because of the opportunity cost that you are giving up when you grab Travis Kelsey in the first round or this year Mark Andrews in the second Kyle Pitts at the two three turn right now on best ball when you are drafting these guys you are giving up an absolute exceptional player uh and 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 the thing is is you don't get necessarily all of those points last year Mark Andrews was great and he was only a fifth round pick so a phenomenal pick but you only got 65 percent of his fantasy points on average because that other tight end would on certain weeks beat out that tight end so you didn't actually get all of what Mark Andrews did even though he was phenomenal one of the worst hit rates of advancing to the playoffs last year was Travis Kelsey who was awesome. He was being drafted in the first round, seventh overall. Um, he finished number two in, in terms of fantasy points, but he only had a 13% advance rate, which is terrible. 
Um, really, really bad. Nine, and this is this is really the, the key here, nine of the top tight ends in advance rates last year were drafted after pick 150. You had Gronk, Dawson Knox, Jack Doyle, Zach Ertz, Pat Fryermuth, Hunter Henry. Oh, so Luth. Da uh, the, the Muth was Luth in best ball as well. Hunter Henry, Dalton Schultz, Jared Cook, Tyler Conklin. These guys were drafted so late, and they all had – greater than 20% advance rates because of the three tight end strategy. The three tight end strategy is I'm going to load up my wide receivers, my running backs, you know, maybe a quarterback that's undervalued in those middle rounds. And then I will get three tight ends to just grab whatever has the best week every week. If you've got enough tight ends there and make them really, really cheap, uh, per friend of the show, TJ Hernandez from 4 for 4, only 36% of the field used the three tight end strategy, but it had the highest advance rate over expectation compared to two tight ends or four tight ends uh, last year. So this is a strategy I've been employing a lot, not 100%. Obviously, if, if Mark Andrews is falling, uh, if, if there's a good value that I like, I, uh, I think Kittle is probably my most commonly drafted later round guy when he falls to like the the late late fifth okay but here's the tight ends that I really like in best ball I'm trying to get at least two of these guys when I get the three tight end strategy if not three of these guys super late Irv Smith Jr. Cole Komet Hunter Henry yeah that one Hunter Henry it's touchdowns he's, yeah he's gonna he's gonna have he will eight Plus touchdowns. So many one for one games. Yeah, Gerald Everett touchdowns. You know, have have uh, have Big Herb throwing the ball in the end zone to Gerald Everett. David and Joku, Austin Hooper, who's now like the wide receiver one in Tennessee right now, <laughs> and Mo Alley Cox undrafted, but you know he's good for five or six gigantic touchdowns. He's interesting. I mean, Jack Doyle was one of those names you threw out for the advance rate. Jack Doyle is gone. You have a better quarterback, mm -hmm. and Mo Ali Cox like should be the primary pass catching tight end. Uh, like, him ending the season with six plus touchdowns, I think, is very in the range of outcomes. Yeah, so uh, that is a good strategy to employ, and that works both in best ball mania as well as in just your twelve team league. So check it out on Underdog. All right, that was best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start playing on Underdog. Today, right now, they'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLERS. Saturday show. Woo. It, 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 there will be a show. It is coming. What, what are we talking about on Saturday, We're answering Brooksy? people's questions. Anything and everything. Oh, baby. So mailbag. How do people get their questions in to possibly get on the show, Brooks? You can always submit on the website. I look there all the time, but we'll be posting on socials before that as well. So this is uh, your your advance notice and the and the voicemail hotline three zero two four six four T F F B was that from memory? No, I read it off the screen, man. Oh, okay, great. I was really impressed. Who memorizes phone numbers? Well, this is show like twelve hundred. Yeah, but I don't. Andy reads it. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't listen to him. I've never listened. What a dummy! I've I've yet to hear him talk. That's gonna do it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Ultimate Draft Kit, it's going to get updated right now. UltimateDraftKit.com, and we will see you on Saturday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.